Hey everybody, welcome back to the Retro Ghetto and today we're going to be taking a look at the games I've completed in 2020 part 2. Okay, so December's here, the end of the year is nearly upon us. I'm sure we'll all be glad to see the back of 2020. Um, but yeah, so I thought it was the right time to come with part two of the video games that I've completed in 2020. If for whatever reason you haven't checked out the first video, please do. Um, I've had a lot of fun putting that video together. I think we did sort of like 17 completions up until that point. So if you haven't, please go back and check that out. Um, but in terms of this video, I don't think I've got quite as many. I think I've got roughly 10. Um, since then, I'm hoping to add a couple more by the end of the year um, And if I do, I'll just add them on my Instagram. So by all means check that out and I'll post everything on there um, Again, like I said last time, I'm not a completionist as such my um, My definition of completed is playing through the story playing through the main bulk of any game the main You know the main meat and potatoes if you like um, of any game that to me is completed. I don't feel the need to platinum games I don't feel the need to collect every collectible every you know hidden secret etc If there's a game out there that I love I'll do that but For me my terminology back to being a kid sitting with legs crossed in front of the television and my SNES console completed is playing through the story seeing the end credits so um, That's what we'll be going with today and I think a lot of that comes from how many games I've got um, like a lot of collectors, I've got such a backlog of games weighing me down all the time that I need to play. So I don't have time to finish a story and then put, you know, 10, 20, 30 hours more into a game. For me, it's more sort of move on to the next. So that's why we're doing. And without further ado, let's crack on. Now, the first one that I've completed since then is arguably my favourite game of the year that I've played. Uh, and I really was surprised by it. Um, when it first came out, there wasn't that. It wasn't that well received. Very mixed, shall we say? I think there was a couple of patches which helped before I got my hands on it. Um, but I went into it sort of not expecting too much, and that is Days Gone. This is the um, Steelbook Collector's Edition, I believe. Comes with a sleeve, and you've got both versions in there. Now, yeah, this game was a real sleeper hit for me. Put that away. I enjoyed it so much. Um, I'd say the first maybe five, six hours, I was a bit, it's okay. I wasn't in love with it. Um, if you've tried this game and played that sort of time and fell out of love with it, please, I implore you, pick it up and try again. Because after that, after breaking down that initial barrier, I, I absolutely loved it. Um, it's one of the games I just kept enjoying it more and more and more as I went on. Um, the open world, the... They don't like to call them zombies anymore, do they? Walkers, whatever you want to call them. Tweeters, I think they're called. Um, or is that people on Twitter? I don't know. I'm an old man. Um, but yeah, I really enjoyed it. Um, a big thing which tied it all in for me was the use of the motorbike. So going between wheels didn't feel like a drag. It didn't feel like it was just something to do to get from one place to the next. Often I wouldn't even fast travel because I really enjoyed the mechanic of the motorbike itself. It was very well balanced. Um... And the best compliment I can give to this game is when I finished it, I wasn't ready for it to end. Now, for me, that's very rare. Being a retro guy at heart, when you get these AAA titles that come out and you have to put in 25, 30 plus hours, I'm usually more than ready for it to be over by the time it's over. With this one, where those credits rolled, I wanted more. And it's one of them that I'm tempted to go back and uh, put a platinum into, which is very rare for me. So that's the highest praise I can play this game, pay this game. So if you haven't played it, been on the fence, or you didn't quite give it your full attention, give Days Gone a try, because uh, I absolutely loved it. Okay, next, take it back to old school. So the next game that I played through was Saturday Night Slam Dusters. Uh, I featured this on one of my pickups videos uh, earlier in the year. I was able to get the manual for this. It's become quite a valuable game. This is just great fun. Um, you know, Capcom were on fire then, weren't they? You know, pretty much everything they were putting out was fantastic. So Saturday Night Slam Masters, and basically, just think of a beat em up. So let's say, um, fire, uh, Final Fight, sorry, but in, in a wrestling ring, basically, and that's what it is. 
Um, it's great for multiplayer. But I played through the campaign uh, on one player mode. Uh, I played with, I think it's called El Stingray, the sort of luchador fighter. Um, it's so much fun. Um, yeah, just wrestling, going in and out of the ring, you can use weapons. R big vary um, in the character designs. They've all got their own in intros and entrances. And the music's fantastic, the sprites, the colour work. It's everything you expect from Super Nintendo and Cam Capcom at that time. As I say, this has become very pricey, certainly in uh, the UK and in PAL. I'm not so sure about America, but I don't think it's cheap on NTSC either. But if you can um, play it on um, you know, some sort of port or a ROM, do so. Because you'll have a lot of fun with this. And I say, especially on multiplayer. So yeah, this was, I believe, where are we now? 19th game of the year I think I completed. So yeah, Slam Masters. And obviously replayability. This isn't just one that you complete once. This is just a, a nice playthrough. I'd like to do it with pretty much every character going forward. So definitely a retro get a top tip. If you haven't played that, give it a try. Okay, this next one, I've probably completed this game, I don't know, 20, 20 times. Um, it coincided with the Mario 35th anniversary celebrations. Um, they gave it free, well, I'll say free, it's part of the online deal on the Nintendo Switch. Um, I've got a physical embodiment of it here in the form of the All-Stars, but it was Super Mario Brothers 3. Um, what a game. I mean, it, every time you play it, you can't help but smile. I, you know, I challenge anybody to play that game and not enjoy it. And it's a difficult game to play and not complete. It, you know, it's not a difficult game, but it's so much fun. Um, every time I put that game in and play it, I have a great fun. It, it sort of takes me back um, to, you know, what sort of all this has come from. Being a child, sitting at my grandma's house with my legs crossed in front of a big fat television, probably had a small screen. Um, playing, you know, all the Mario All Stars games. So, you don't need me to tell you how good this game is, but this was Super Mario Bros. 3. And it's just a great time. Okay, so, this is one of the reasons why I don't have as many games completed uh, in this video as the last one, because this game took a lot. It took a lot out of me. I don't even want to know how many playthroughs uh, it took, how many deaths it took to get this done. And I would probably say this is arguably uh, my proudest game of accomplishment just to finish this game. Now, there'll be people sniggering at that because, you know, it's probably not that hard to them. But I've never been uh, a big guy in, sh in terms of shmups or shoot em ups, whatever you want to call them. It's something I've come to later in life that I found love for largely because of this game. Um, and that is Thunder Force 4 on the Mega Drive. What a game. Music is arguably the best music of the generation. And that's saying something for that generation. Uh, I'm on the Mega Drive, Stroke Genesis. Yeah, the music is... A, the music itself, even if the game was terrible, it'd be worth popping that cartridge in. But let me tell you, this game is absolutely phenomenal. And it is tough. All shmups are tough. But this is brutal. Um, there was a level in here particularly. I think it was level 8. And the boss I just kept dying. And once you get that sort of far into a game, it's an hour of time, you know. Every time you get beat and you die, it's another hour you've gone, another hour. Am I going to do another hour to try again? Um, it really did become a war of attrition to get this one completed. But I was determined to do it because I'd never completed a schmuck. Um, and I didn't want to let this one pass me by. What helped me get through this um, was buying it on the Sega Ages collection, I think it is, on the Nintendo Switch. Now, there's a mode on that. It's called Kids Mode. And let me tell you. It is not for kids. Uh, basically, what that allows you to do is keep the weapons. On this one, if you die, or you have to do a uh, continue game over sort of thing, all of the weapons that you've amassed are gone, and you start again with basic weapons, and you have to start collecting them again. So on the Switch version, on kids mode, um, you get to keep your weapons. And what that allowed me to do was it allowed me to get a bit further than level 8. It allowed me to see what was coming next, so that I could anticipate it better. So that when I did go back to the Mega Drive version, and I put that other hour in again, and I got there, I was... Bit well, put my teeth back in. I was a bit better equipped uh, once I was there. It allowed me to, you know, sort of have a, an inside information before I got there. It wasn't all new to me rather than just getting to another level thinking, oh my god, what's going on here? Dead. Right, let's try again. I sort of had a bit more background, um, and that definitely helped me um, get through it on the Sega Mega Drive. So, yeah, Thunder Force 4, um, just a fantastic game. And if you haven't, check the soundtrack out. Okay, what we got next? Yeah, I put just a piece of paper here because I haven't got a physical embodiment of it. 
Again, tied into the Mario 35th anniversary, there's a game on the Switch uh, called Mario 35, and it's so much fun. It's basically, um, if you've played the Tetris games, where it's like a Tetris, Tetris 99, it's called, where you battle against other players, and when they get lines, they land on your screen. And it adds a very competitive online element to Tetris. It's so much fun. And they basically have done that with Mario. So you go through Mario levels, you're, you know, the usual jumping on bad guys. And but when you kill them, they go to other people's screens. And it really is a lot of fun. Um, and it's like a lot of things, like the one time I dabbled with Fortnite and when I used to play Tetris 99. I just want to get that one win. I'm not interested in keep doing it over and over again. And so I played it solidly for a few hours. I put probably 10 efforts into it and then I got my win. So for me, I'm counting that as a game completed. Uh, you can debate it all you want, but I'm having it. A lot of fun. Um, and I think it's coming off at some point. I think like a lot of the Mario 30th anniversary things, they're only going to keep it going until I think March and then they're pulling it. So if you haven't checked it out, make sure you do. It's great fun. Okay. This next one's really interesting. Um, I'm going with Agalos. I don't know if it's Agalos. We're going to say Agalos. For the purposes of this video and continuity, we're going to call it Agalos. I picked this up because it's a sort of... I'm going to say 16-bit graphical style. It's very much in the vein of um, Wonder Boy and Alex Kidd. Um, you know, a pla action platformer with some RPG, some basic RPG elements, upgrade your armor, etc. Now, when I bought this, I was told it was, a, you know, seven hours. And as I've said many times, I enjoy that. I don't always want to be putting 20, 30 hours in. I've got a full-time job. I've got a young son. I don't always have the time to commit. Um, this did not take me seven hours. Maybe I'm shit at games. Maybe I'm shit at this. I don't know. But this took me probably closer to 15. But I enjoyed it. At first, it just felt like a standard sort of old school sprite based um, platformer. It was decent. I was playing through it. But as I went through, it got harder and harder. And it became. By about the end of it, I had a sense of achievement, which is what I want from gaming. You know, it felt like it was quite difficult. There are some commands that you have to master um, that aren't going to be easy for everybody. There's a lot of to and and fro in, you have to work things out. So, yeah, by the time I completed it, I was quite proud of myself. Not proud of how long it took based on reading on Google being seven hours. Google must be better than me. Like I say, it probably took me 15. But uh, yeah, I'd definitely give it a try. If you think it's something you might like, if you like uh, Wonder Boy, if you like Alex Kidd, as I say, give this one a try. And I think I mentioned it on the pickups video where I bought this. Um, the value of this game has been going up, really has been going up quite steep. I remember at one point I passed on this for about 13 quid. Now it's probably going for like 30. I think it was one of the quite small print run games. So um, if you're a collector and you're interested, probably now's the time to pick this up. Okay, so I think we're down to my last couple. I've got one new school, one old school left. Um, the next one is Horizon Chase Turbo. This is such a fun game. Like This is as much fun as you'll have with a racing game, I think, on any genre. Uh, I've recently picked up an Xbox One. If you've seen my last pickups video, you'll know. And I, I largely bought that system for Forza Horizon. Forza Horizon 4. And it's a great game. But this is so much fun. In terms of arcade races, there's old school types, you know, Top Gear, Outrun, etc. This is in the vein of those, but I'm going to say better. Um, the music's fantastic. The colours are amazing. The colour palette on this is so good. And it's fast. It's action-paced. Um, and it's just a lot of fun. It's as much about avoiding the cars in front as it is racing. You've not got to worry too much about your skills in terms of pulling off handbrake turns and changing gears and all that kind of stuff. Uh, a lot of it is just sort of dodging the cars uh, in and around you, staying out of trouble. I remember at one point I put this game down for a couple of weeks. I got distracted by something else. And then when I came back to it, it seemed so fast. I was like, nah, it's, I've got it on a different setting. But you have to get your, sort of your eye back in it and get your mind back in it. A few races later, I was, you know, I was Neo in the Matrix again and <laughs> I was with it. Uh, I put this down on my list of completed because I completed the World Tour mode, which seems to be the, the main part of the game. Um, I think there's 13 different countries, uh, literally from Hong Kong to the UK. Um, all the tracks are very unique, or should I say, not so much the tracks are unique, but the uh, the backgrounds uh, and the visuals are unique. The music, the sounds, you unlock cars as you go through. And Listen, definitely worth picking this one up. It's so much fun. It's available on all platforms. If you're not a collector, 
if you haven't got some weird disease like I have where you can't buy digital, pick it up digital. I think it's not very expensive. Yeah, Horizon Chase Turbo, it's great fun. Okay, and the last one, I've only very recently completed this game, um, and that is Super Turrican on the Super Nintendo. Um, I've been trying to pick this up for a while as a collector. It's got very expensive. Um, and sometimes when I buy games that are quite expensive, it's the extra kick up the arse that I need to play them. You know, I, don't, I like to play my games. I just want to put them on a shelf. And when you spend a lot of money on them, it sort of gives me that added impetus um, to play them. <laughs> I say, looking over my shoulder at Agane, sitting there, taunting me. Next year, we're having that on the completed list. If, uh, if anyone's watching this, if Agane is not on my list next year, then, you know, make sure you tell me about myself. But uh, yeah, Super Turrican. This is a good fun. It's soundtrack's great as as with most sort of sixteen uh, bit era games. Um, it's an action platformer. It is what it is. Um, it got relatively difficult towards the end. It's one of the games that starts off and you think this is quite easy, but uh, after a few playthroughs, you realise that those first few levels you've really got to be careful with your lives because uh, you're going to need them towards the last few levels. So yeah, definitely worth checking out. Super Turrican, and that's the last one of the year for me. I say that, I've, uh, there's a few weeks left of the year, I've pre-ordered my first game since No Man's Sky, I put my hands up, I was one of those guys that pre-ordered No Man's Sky, so that put me off, but I've got a game coming this week, I'm really excited about it, um, I don't review games, so let me know if it's something you want to see, because uh, I'm going to put some hours into this pretty early, so uh, I might do a little review, so let me know if that's something you'd be interested in. And that's Phoenix Rising on the Switch. I'm a big Greek mythology fan. Um, and it looks like Breath of the Wild. So for me, it feels like you can't go wrong. So yeah, I'm picking that up here in the next couple of days. I'm going to put some time into that. So that's one I would like to add to the list for sure um, before the end of this year. So listen, I appreciate everybody that stuck around. And if you haven't, like I could say, please watch the first video. There was like 17 games on that one. Um, yeah, I really was going at it earlier in the year. That was like height of lockdown. <laughs> Not allow us to do. I don't want to make any more babies. So yeah, I was playing a lot of video games. And um, yeah, the 17 on that list, I think there was like eight or nine today, maybe 10. I'm not kind. But uh, yeah, I really enjoyed 2020 in terms of gaming. Listen, it's been a shit year. We all know that. But um, it's nice to record this. It's nice that I've got something from 2020 to take. I started my channel. Um, I've had some great time gaming with friends and alone. So yeah, just take the positives. Um, thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one. And uh, keep it retro. Bye. Retro ghetto. <laughs>